Hey y'all, it is Sunday morning. I just woke up a few minutes ago, as you can tell by my crazy, crazy hair. I actually plan on getting ready in a few minutes to start filming some videos today, but I wanted to go ahead and start this vlog since I didn't do it yesterday. I didn't forget about y'all. I promise it was more like nothing went on. I didn't even really read anything except for finishing Blood Sugar, which I'll get to in a minute. We did go to a small Renaissance festival here in South Mississippi. This was the first time that we've ever had a Ren Fair here. So we wanted to go ahead and check it out. But, you know, it was very small. There wasn't a whole lot going on. There wasn't even some of the things that you would typically expect from a Ren Fair. We walked around and within about an hour we had seen everything there was to see and so we went ahead and left and went to PetSmart to get the dogs and cats food for the next couple of weeks and then we went to the grocery store to get our food for the next couple of weeks and then by the time that I had gotten home around two o'clock I crashed. I crashed for a couple of hours because I was still suffering from being out late on Thursday night after the concert and then it was just dinner and chores and things like that so there wasn't much going on and I literally didn't read anything aside from the 45 minutes it took me to finish blood sugar yesterday. So let's go ahead and talk about blood sugar. I can't believe I'm saying this but I think I'm gonna give that book a three star. I know that's weird considering how much I was really really enjoying it for most of the book actually. I just found it very unique. As I mentioned in my previous vlog, it was very much like a character study of a woman who was a killer, but not like your typical kind of killer. And it was really about her life and her past experiences and what led to each moment of killing. And she's also being investigated for the death of her husband, which is one death she did not cause. And so you're following her past life up to this point, And then you're following her in the present as she wonders what's going to happen to her because she's being indicted. She thinks she might go to trial and then go to prison. Now, here's where there might be spoilers. I'm going to try to keep it as vague as possible. But if you don't want any spoilers at all, please go ahead and click off until the book picture is off of the screen. By the end of this book, really nothing has happened. So even though she's being investigated for the death of her husband, she's being indicted, all of this stuff is happening. There are a couple events that end up getting her out of the situation. And so by the end of the book, nothing has really come of anything that we have seen so far in this book. And I was left kind of asking myself, what was the point of this book? What was the author trying to say? What was the message I was supposed to receive as the reader? I was left very underwhelmed by the ending of this book because even though I really enjoyed it overall. I found it was a different kind of story, one that I had never read before. I liked the voice of our main character. I liked being inside her head and some of the observations that she was making about life and the way that we think and what we do because she was a therapist. I enjoyed all of that about the book. By the end of it, nothing, nothing has happened. And I really don't even know how to categorize this because it's definitely not a suspense thriller. There was nothing suspenseful or thrilling about this book. And the only mystery in the book was really what happens to her husband. And you find that out within I think the first half of the book and there's nothing really sinister about it. So I really don't feel like it fits into a lot of the categories that it's being placed in. It's definitely not highbrow enough to be considered literary fiction and I'm not sure contemporary fiction fits it either just because it's a little bit darker than what you would expect from contemporary fiction. So I have no idea how to categorize this book, what it even was, what the point was. And so because I was feeling a little bit underwhelmed by the end of the book, I think I'm going to go ahead and give it three stars. I don't know how long lasting this is going to be in my brain, which is sad because I really did think it was a unique story. I've never really read anything like it before, a character like Ruby before. And to have it just end up being kind of meh is really disappointing. But on that note, I did make a decision not to start anything new yesterday. And I don't even know if I'm going to start anything new today because this month has really, really been a meh reading month. And I don't know if that's really because of the books, like I'm just picking up the wrong books, or I don't know if it's something to do with me and like my state of mind that's making it so I'm not enjoying these books. But all I know is that I've only had one four star read this month. It's been Beach Read. And even that was not like a mind blowing, I love this book with my whole heart and soul type of read. So um, I think I might spend today clearing out my booktube queue. I only have like 19 or 20 videos left to watch. I have some Netflix that I could definitely watch. I don't know if I'm going to start anything today, but if I do, I think I might start An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. This was sent to me as part of the monthly gifting I'm a part of in a Facebook group. And it's kind of like a last chance for Sherry Lapina for me because I've read two of her books and I'm 50-50 with them. Liked one, did not like the other. And so I wanted to see how I like The Unwanted Guest, especially because I think it's like an isolationist mystery thriller. So I'm excited about that. That's where I am, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and have some breakfast and coffee and then get ready to film for the day. And I will check in with you later if I actually have some reading updates, but if not, then it will be tomorrow. Hey y'all, it is Tuesday. This is now only my second update 
for this vlog. And I'm thinking that I might have to make it a two week vlog instead of a one week because I just don't think I'm gonna have enough content to make this a one week vlog. Do you ever feel so tired or run down that you can do what you absolutely need to do every day, but anything extraneous is just not gonna happen? That's kind of how I've been feeling every time I think about picking up the camera to talk about what I'm reading. I'm just like, no, I don't have the energy to do this. So, and honestly, there's not really anything going on this week. It's just a really basic standard work week. And so there's not a lot of extra footage. It would just be me as a talking head during these vlogs. So I do have a reading update for y'all. I did start An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. I wanted to go ahead and read it as soon as possible just because I'm on the fence about Sherry Lapina. I'm 50-50 with her books. And after finishing An Unwanted Guest, I'm still not sure because I'm only giving that book like a three or a 3.5. I haven't decided. So it definitely isn't like a favorite and it wasn't mind blowing, but it was a really fun, enjoyable read. I had a really great time reading it and I just flew through it. It was like candy and it was almost exactly what I needed. I knew from the very opening pages that this wasn't going to be a new favorite. It wasn't going to be anything that I loved and I'll tell you why in a second, but it was still a really great time and I'm glad that I read it. I'm glad that I picked it up and it was just kind of like a slump breaker. I think that I needed. So an unwanted guest has very much kind of Agatha Christie and then there were none vibes kind of or probably more closely one by one by Ruth Ware. There are a lot of similarities between those two books. It's about a group of people who are all at this secluded kind of rustic hotel. Each of them are there for their own reasons and their own purposes and of course one of them ends up dead and there's a huge storm and the power is out and they can't go get help and they can't call for help and so they're all trapped in this hotel with each other and one of them might be a killer. And that's really the base premise of it. And so it is something that has absolutely been done before. It's nothing new or revolutionary. And the reason why I knew I wasn't gonna love, love it is just because from the very first couple of pages, you have a bunch of different characters thrown at you. And so you know that you're not going to get a lot of time with any particular character and you have to try to keep track of them all and who they're with and why they're there. And that's typically hard for me as a character driven reader because I can never really truly connect with the book because I'm not gonna be able to connect with the characters. I do feel like Sherry Lapina did a really decent job of distinguishing each character, making it easy to follow which character was which and why they were there and if they weren't with anybody and things of that nature. I never felt really confused or anything. I definitely didn't connect or care about any of the characters but still like I said it was overall a really fun time I just enjoyed my reading experience and I thought where she went with it at the end was kind of cool you know a problem with these stories is always the fact that you have a limited cast of characters so it's always got to be one of them right so you can never really be truly surprised at the whodunit but like I said it was just a fun reading experience it was one of those things that you can read and fly through like I flew through 50% of this book on Sunday just while I was doing chores it was easy to get lost in it was easy to do other things while I was listening to it so it really was just what I needed. I don't know how I would have felt about this book if I was in the mood for something a little bit more substantial or if I was hoping that this would be something more substantial but overall it was what I expected it to be. Nothing crazy mind-blowing but overall a good time and so I think just because of that because of how positive my experience with it was I'm gonna give it a 3.5 but aside from that I don't really have many updates. I might have mentioned in a previous clip that Lessons in Chemistry is the only book left on my TBR that I still actually need to read and it's on hold at my library. I'm waiting for for the audiobook hold to come in. And so in the meantime, I've started Every Last Secret by A.R. Tori. I've never read anything by her, but I've heard great things. I went ahead and started it, and so far I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm definitely getting a rich people behaving badly vibe from it, so we'll see. But yeah, that is really all I got. I gotta get back to work, but I will check in later. <laughs>
y'all. It is Wednesday. As you can see, I am bundled up. Last night was the, one of the first really cold nights that we've had since the start of the fall season. And I am taking full advantage because living in the South, we don't get pretty much any fall and we only get like a couple months of winter. And so I'm just living my best life here with my scarf and my jacket, just taking full advantage of the season. I have made a lot of progress in Every Last Secret by A.R. Tori, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish it today. So I wanted to come on and give you an update on what it's actually about. It is basically rich people behaving badly. So you're following two main characters, Kat Winthrop and Nina Ryder. At the very start of the book, Nina is in a police interrogation room. Something has happened, you don't know what it is. And then you are following the previous events, four months prior, three months, two months, one month, etc. And so it really is a story about the catty relationship between these two women. Kat Winthrop is in her mid 30s, I would say, and she's, you know, very beautiful. She's married to William Winthrop. Everybody is jealous of her. They are highly privileged, successful power couple, basically. And they seem to have the perfect life, the perfect marriage. Nina Ryder is a doctor who is hired by William to work for one of his companies. Instantly, Kat dislikes her. She feels threatened by Nina, even though Nina herself is married. And you're following them as they kind of come into this, I don't know, maybe frenemy is the, the right word, but basically Kat dislikes Nina, Nina dislikes Kat, and Nina essentially wants to take what Kat has. Nina had a very rough childhood. She was raised by an abusive and neglectful father, and so she basically fought and clawed her way to get away from her father. She married her husband basically right out of high school. They were high school sweethearts, and even though her husband basically adores her, she has always longed for more, and so she is constantly trying to get a step up in the world. She's doing whatever it takes takes to basically have more and she has a history of being like a home wrecker and sleeping with married men and everything like that just to get that step up and you're following both perspectives you're following cats and you're following Nina's and you're following them as they're basically playing this game and it is definitely what I would consider to be a popcorn thriller it is one of those books that you open and you really just want to keep reading you're really absorbed in it you don't want to put it down and it just keeps you turning the pages it is definitely an engrossing story it is engaging and I want to keep going and reading it and kind of along the same lines of an unwanted guest. It's the kind of entertainment that I need. I'm not necessarily expecting this to be a new favorite, but I'm really enjoying A.R. Tori's writing style. I'm very absorbed and interested in both Nina and Kat and to see how this all comes about. I'm now to the point of the story where we kind of know or have a hint of what actually happened and why Nina is in a police interrogation room. So definitely looking forward to continuing it and finishing it. I only have an hour and a half of the audiobook left and I will absolutely be finishing it today. And my hold for Lessons in Chemistry just came in from the library. So I will absolutely be starting that soon. And then I will be 100% done with my October TBR for the most part. And then I will have several days of just being able to pick and choose what I wanna read at any given time, which I'm excited about. But so far my reading this week has been pretty solid and enjoyable and I'm not mad about it and hopefully that continues for the rest of the month. I guess I'm gonna go inside and get to work and I'll check in with you guys later. Hey y'all, it is Saturday morning. I just finished with a nail appointment and now I'm heading home. We actually had our new refrigerator delivered today and so my kitchen is a chaotic mess. But before I got home, I wanted to go ahead and take a minute to update y'all because it has been, I think a couple of days since I did my last update. I think when I last updated you, I was still reading Every Last Secret, which I have now finished. And I really enjoyed that story. It kept remaining delicious the entire time that I was reading it. It was just a solid popcorn thriller. It was just something that you want to keep consuming and you don't really want to stop. It was just pure catfight drama between two women and I ate it up. I really did enjoy the story overall and how they were each playing their own game to serve their own ends and how it ended. And so I would definitely recommend Every Last Secret by A.R. Tori. At the very least, it's a good time. So if you don't want something maybe too serious but will keep you turning the pages, I would definitely recommend. I am currently reading Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, and I'm really enjoying it so far. But let me tell you, this book makes me very, very ranty. Not because of anything wrong with the book, but just the subject matter it covers. So in the story, we're following Elizabeth Zott, and the story starts in the 50s, and she is a chemist. She is a scientist. And this time period was not kind to women professionals of any kind. Unless you were like a woman's secretary or assistant, you basically were meant to stay at home, be a wife and a mother, and that was it. And and not only were you not expected to serve any other purpose, you weren't really believed that you could serve any other purpose. So you're really seeing the horrific times that Elizabeth is going through as she just wants to be a chemist. She wants to do science. She wants to contribute.
contribute to the world and men are not allowing her to do it. <laughs> I just really want to know what made men, particularly European white men, believe that they were the superior beings and that all other people were lowly <laughs> and that women were inferior in every single way, shape or form and that they couldn't possibly do anything close to what men do. It is really ridiculous some of the things people actually do and say to her because she is a woman chemist. She reminds me a little bit of Temperance Brennan from the show Bones, if you've ever seen that. She was a forensic anthropologist and as a scientist, she was very no nonsense. She was blunt, she was straightforward. She didn't necessarily understand humor or standard social cues or colloquialisms or things of that nature. Elizabeth Zott is very much like that just because she's such a logical scientific mind. And so you get kind of that personality. And so this story is following her as she is a chemist working at this one company and what happens to her there and the life that she builds and then what happens when it all kind of falls apart and goes in a direction than what she was expecting. And she ends up becoming the host of this afternoon daytime cooking show where she combines cooking with chemistry because cooking is chemistry. And so she adds like the scientific twist onto cooking and it becomes popular, but that's not really what she wants. That's not her passion. She wants to be a scientist in a lab, but it becomes apparent that her show is very much empowering women. It makes them feel like they are competent, smart beings in a time where they are made to feel like anything but. So not only are people kind of upset because of the science aspect that she's throwing into the show, but also because she's kind of shaking up the status quo as well. And I'm just now really getting to that part where you're seeing her show take on that very motivational, impactful stance rather than just being a cooking show. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where that goes and how it develops. Overall, I really love Bonnie Garmus's writing style. This is the first book I've ever read by her. I don't know offhand if it is a debut, if she has other books out there, but so far I'm very much enjoying her writing style. It's very intelligent and clever. Obviously there's definitely a lot of scientific references, a lot of references to the social inequalities and norms of the day, which I find very, very interesting. It just makes you angry and astonished at points that women were actually looked at and treated this way and might still be treated this way in, in our country or in other parts of the world. It's just absolutely flabbergasting. I have no idea where this thought comes from that one human race or gender is superior to another. And I certainly don't know where we as a species get the idea that we are the superior species. And it actually really does cover that in this book, how humanity has this really flawed, egotistical, arrogant idea that they are the superior species and no other animal species comes close. But in reality, that's not the case. But that blind speciesism is what actually propagates things that we see in this world, like horrific animal abuse and dog fighting and factory farming and things of that nature that we see in the world. It's because we all have this idea that animals are there for our entertainment and exploitation. They don't really go into the animal side of it that much, but they do make reference to some of the flawed ideas of our species, which I find very interesting. I'm here for more of that message. I really, really am. I think I'm about 60 plus percent of the way through. I don't know if I will finish it today because I do want to catch up on some book too, but I will definitely finish it tomorrow. And then I'm officially 100% done with my October TBR with about seven days to spare. So I'll probably pick up an extra book or two for the month and then jump right into November. This year is flying, but I'm loving being in the fall season. I'm very much looking forward to the Thanksgiving Christmas time. I'm just so here for it. Anyway, y'all, I should probably get home. My poor husband had to facilitate the delivery of the refrigerator all by himself because I was at my nail appointment and now I have to go clean up the kitchen. I think I might take the time to like do a more thorough deep clean of it as well. And I also have to stop and get air in my tires. So just lots of stupid adulting today. Anyway, I hope that you are doing well and are getting some good reading in. And I will check in when I finish lessons in chemistry, if not before.
videos and I wanted to take a moment to pop on here while I'm in the filming setup so I can do an update because I did finish Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus and I have a couple of Funko Pops I want to haul. Okay first let's go ahead and talk about Lessons in Chemistry. I think I'm going to give this a 4.5 stars. Now I will admit that I don't really feel like I had as much of an emotional connection to this book as I normally would for a 4.5 star read. However this book was so important and intriguing and because of the important topics that it covered, because of the quotability of this story, because of the characters which really made this story Story, what it was. I feel like this earns a 4.5. I said a lot of what I wanted to say about this yesterday in my update clip and so I don't really have anything I want to add in terms of like plot or my rant which was long enough thank you very much but you know some of that stuff just it did continue throughout the book and it just makes you angry and it makes you think and it really does make you question societal norms and the status quo. I said in my Goodreads review that it seems like we always spend so much time in the present day apologizing for the norms and status quo of 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago but yet today we still continue to blindly follow societal norms and the status quo. There are people a lot of people out there who are constantly fighting that who are are constantly speaking out and a lot of the times they're shunned or they're viewed as troublemakers or things of that nature but we need more of those people. In all honesty we need people who are willing to shake up that status quo and break those societal norms. I will never understand why we spend so much time following them trying to fit in and things of that nature and I feel like this really did a great job of covering that and questioning that and that is why I'm going with the 4.5 stars because our main character Elizabeth Slott was able to articulate some of my thoughts exactly especially regarding arbitrary cultural norms and the arrogance of humanity. I just really appreciated a lot of the messages in here and again the characters were fantastic. They were so quirky and a lot of them were just very lovable. Of course there were the ones that were intentionally not lovable that you love to hate really but I just thought this was very well done and extremely quotable and I know that Bonnie Garmus is working on another book and this is actually being adapted and I'm excited for both of those things. I will absolutely read more from Bonnie Garmus. I will absolutely watch the adaptation of this. I mean so I'm very excited for the success of this story. It really does deserve a lot of the hype that it is being given and so I highly recommend to any of those who find that they might be interested in this story definitely pick it up especially if you like strong character driven stories. Okay now getting into the Funko Pops. If you've been around on my channel for a while you know that I am a Funko collector. I hesitate to call myself a collector anymore just because I have not only slowed way down in my purchasing of Funko Pops but I've actually sold a lot of my collection. As I've been making a lot of lifestyle changes in an effort to live more sustainably and purchase things more conscientiously, I realized that while I love Funko Pops and they've been a huge part of my life for the past 10 years and I don't think I'm ever going to stop fully bringing new ones into my home, that I want to be a lot more intentional about which ones I do bring into my home. I want to focus on specific collections and if I'm being honest a lot of them just don't hold their value but Harry Potter is definitely going to be the one collection that I continue. I have almost every single Harry Potter Funko Pop, all of the standard pops, all of the exclusive editions ever released. I'm only missing a couple and so I have some here for you. So it's probably going to be hard to fully see the pop just because of the plastic but I'm going to do my best. So this is number 132. This is Harry Potter and from the very first movie. This is him with the Sorcerer's Stone. You probably can't see that but he's got a little Sorcerer's Stone in his hand right there. Then of course we've got Hermione and you can see here she's got her like little Christmas sweater on. Um, she's actually got her wand raised. Again I'm so sorry about the light y'all. It's probably really hard to see but there she is. And then we have Ron Weasley and he is actually in the Devil's Snare right here. So this is all from the first movie. And then last but definitely not least I have this big boy. This is Harry Potter with Hedwig obviously. This is an 18 inch Funko Pop. I think this probably is one of the biggest pops ever released. They may have other 18 inch pops. I'm not sure but it's definitely the biggest one I own. It's so big in fact that it doesn't really come in a standard Funko box. That's why he is out of the box. He's the only pop that I have that is out of the box and I'm still trying to find a place for him because he doesn't fit with the rest of my Harry Potter collection. So i um, got this big boy just hanging out but he is a new acquisition as well. Okay y'all that is it for this update. I am not currently reading anything. I finished Lessons in Chemistry yesterday evening and have not figured out what I want to read yet. So I'm probably going to try to figure that out today. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Going to go have lunch, go ahead and start the chores that have been neglected while I've spent the morning filming. And I will check in with you later. Y'all, I have to go into work right now 
and I'm not happy about it because I am at this super intense part of the book that I'm reading. I only have an hour of listening time left and we're at the most intense part and there is so much at stake and I'm like practically in tears listening to this and I have to go into work. Let me back up a second because y'all have no idea what I'm even reading since the last update I gave you was on Sunday and I had just finished Lessons in Chemistry. So I decided to pick up A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson. So this follows our main character, Dr. Alex Carter. She is a wildlife biologist whose primary concern is wildlife conservation. So she loves being out in the field and observing endangered species and doing scientific studies and things of that nature. For the last couple of years, she has been living in Boston. She moved out there to be with her boyfriend, but things are not working out and she is not happy there. So when she's given the opportunity to go to Montana in the mountains to study wolverines she jumps at the opportunity she misses being out in the field so much she's going to be staying in this like abandoned resort lodge whose surrounding land has kind of been turned into a nature preserve but once she gets there she realizes that she's not really wanted there by the locals a lot of people are hostile towards her because they wanted to use the land for other things this is especially true for like the big cattle ranchers out there who wanted to of course use it for cattle grazing and things like that so she's met with a lot of hostility and not only that but like actual threats and she also also notices some weird things happening on the preserve as well and then of course things start to escalate so all of the events of the book have really been leading up to this last section I say that it's been pretty intense for the past hour of listening or so and I still have an hour left to go without trying to give too much away I will say that there are animals involved and that's what's got my heart racing really fast because lives of animals are at stake in this book and I emotionally cannot handle it people are in danger it's one thing but when it's animals I am just so emotionally incapable of handling so I'm very upset that I have to go into work and I don't get to know what happens right now to those precious babies. But kind of on that note, I did want to say that another aspect of this book that I'm really enjoying is the informational and educational aspects of it, which I know is weird to say because this is basically like an isolation thriller. But because our main character is a wildlife biologist, you definitely get important information, not only about the wolverines that she's studying, but wildlife conservation in general. Find out a lot about the threats to wildlife, all of the anthropogenic reasons why they are in danger. It also touches upon the devastating effects of the commercial... Whoa, that got really loud. So I'm really sorry if it's kind of hard to hear me right now. I'm going to continue because I need to finish this clip. It does touch on the devastating effects of the commercial animal agriculture industry, factory farming, and how much of the environmental issues that we have are actually related to animal agriculture. It does all of this without being preachy. So don't worry if you are afraid that it's going to be preachy. It really isn't. It really does fit in with the story because like I said, our main character is a wildlife biologist. And so this is all part of her job and it's part of her life. It's a part of her passion and why she became a wildlife biologist to help and give a voice to these wildlife species that are being so drastically affected by human actions. And as an animal advocate, as somebody who is deeply concerned for animal welfare and the state of our planet and environment, all of these messages are really resonating with me. So far, very much enjoying this. Like I said, I am currently on the edge of my seat trying to figure out what happened. If today wasn't going to be such a busy day at work, I might try to sneak in some listening time in between the other things that I'm doing, but I just don't know if I can. So I'm going to have to wait until after work and after the gym to finish it. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm so nervous about what is going to happen. But anyway, I do have a lot to do. I need to go ahead and get my butt in gear. So I'm going to go ahead and head into work. Hopefully I make it through this day to finish this book. Talk to you later. Hey y'all, it is Thursday afternoon. As you can probably tell, I just got done filming, hence why I look put together in front of my bookshelves. I have a random day off today because my university football team is apparently playing a nationally televised game against LSU, and it's such a big deal that they shut down university operations. And so I'm definitely using today as a catch-up day, a catch-up day for, yes, work stuff, and as well as home stuff and booktube stuff. I knew I had three pretty lengthy videos that I wanted to film, and I didn't want to have to do them all in one day, so luckily I was able to get one done out of the way and yeah, it took me about an hour to film. Hopefully I'm going to be able to cut that way, 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 way down. I did have a lot of interruptions. So hopefully that'll get down to like under a half an hour. I did want to come on here and do an update because I finished A Solitude of Wolverines and I do have some more Funko Pops and as well as fun bookish mail that I wanted to share. So first, A Solitude of Wolverines. 
The last I updated, I was like on the edge of my seat waiting to finish that book. And luckily it really didn't disappoint. There was a lot of buildup to the climax portion of the books, but then you're getting to the last two hours of the audiobook. I don't know how long that is in terms of page count, but you're getting to that very end. And the last two hours of that audiobook were just like, go, 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 go. Definitely get the isolation atmosphere, that wintry, cold, snowy feeling. You know, you can feel the character is on her own. She's trying to survive. There are people after her. It really was just gripping the edges of your seat, trying to hang on for the ride. So I really enjoyed the overall conclusion to the story. I enjoyed where it went and I am definitely going to be reading more from this author. This is a series. I don't know if it's a duology or more, but there is at least one more book out. It's called A Lizard of Polar Bears, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. I'll try to remember to pop it up on the screen. But this actually continues a part of the plot that started in book one that I was a little bit confused about because it was a very small part of the plot and it was just kind of sprinkled in here and there. And I was actually going to have a criticism about that. Like, why is this even included? What is the point? But it was like set up for the second book. So the plot line that was kind of built in the first book that you don't really pay much attention to is going to continue in the second book. So I'm really interested to see what that's about because I believe it deals with like a serial killer, a solid four stars. Very much enjoyed my reading experience of that book. Highly recommend if you are interested in wintry isolation thrillers. Definitely a great story. Loved it. Speaking of isolation thrillers, I am now reading Shiver by Allie Reynolds. This follows a group of friends who 10 years ago all met and connected at like a snowboarding competition. They are all competitive snowboards and then something happened to one of them and now they are reuniting 10 years later at the same like resort ski lodge that they met before. But they soon realized that it's somebody unknown to them that invited them there and they are being based basically messed with because the person that brought them there claims to know their secrets. And so they're really trying to figure out who brought them there. Do they really know what happened to the person that went missing 10 years ago? They're all very, of course, suspicious of each other. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I have about 50% of the book left to go. And it definitely has like a different feel than An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina or One by One by Ruth Ware because you're not in a locked room situation where the characters are being killed one by one. At least I don't think so. Nobody has died yet, but it's really more about the mystery in the past. So it's kind of like a combination of a wintry isolation thriller, but also like those dark academia tropes you get where, you know, something happened in college and now there's a reunion. Well, something happened 10 years ago at the snowboarding competition and now they are reuniting and you're getting the flashbacks from 10 years ago and then you're getting the people in the present day. So again, really enjoying it, really enjoying the tropes, the dynamics between the characters, interested to see what they're all hiding, who did what, who knows what, what actually happened to the characters back 10 years ago. I'm just enjoying the journey. So I will give you more updates when I've actually finished the book. I don't know if I'm going to finish it today. If I do, I will update you, but I do plan on ending this vlog today just because I want to get all of the things edited today while I have that extra time. That way I can get it finalized for Saturday. So that is the plan. Now onto the fun mail. First, the pop that I'm probably most excited about, I have Thackeray Binks from Hocus Pocus. Isn't he adorable? This was a Funko Shop exclusive and I just love him. As soon as this released, I knew I had to have him. The most iconic black cat ever, I think, with the exception of Salem from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. He is just super duper adorable. Then we have yet another new Harry Potter pop release. I swear to God, they release new Harry Potter pops every single year. And since that's the collection that I focus on the most and I want to own every single one that they have, of course I had to get it. So this is Harry Potter with the trolley. I don't know if you can see the ring light always makes this super difficult, but you can see like he has his trolley, he has cage, he's got Hedwig there and he is headed on platform nine and three quarters to get to the Hogwarts Express. Isn't that cute? This is a deluxe pop, so it is definitely big bigger than your standard size pops. They've been releasing a lot of these lately and I'm running out of room, yes. Now for the beautiful bookish mail, I managed to score the Illumicrate editions of the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox. They released the Atlas Six, I think it was earlier this year in this stunning edition and they sold out of it. It didn't make it to general sale and I was so bummed because it was just stunning. So this is the Illumicrate edition. It is beautifully holographic. I love it so much. Look at those end pages. I just, I just can't. It is just a remarkably stunning edition of a book. The hardcover is also holographic. I don't know if you can tell, but it is definitely shiny and sparkly. And of course, this is a signed edition. These are the end pages that are involved. And I believe that there are some illustrations as well. Let me see if I can find one for you. Yep, here is one right here. So yes, absolutely stunning, stunning edition of this book. I will admit that I did read Atlas Six a few weeks ago 
and didn't love it. I found it a little bit too highbrow and pretentious for what I was looking for. I was looking for more dark academia, but there was a lot of very complicated science in here and it all went over my head and I felt like it really detracted me from the story. But I am going to continue with The Atlas Paradox, but I plan to read that physically in the hopes that I will get more out of it. So this is The Atlas Six and let me show you The Atlas Paradox. This is the Alice Paradox. Isn't it beautiful? I just wish like I could capture the holographic nature of this book. It's so, so beautiful. There's the spine. Ooh, the spines are nice too. I didn't even really notice that. Look at them together. Oh, those are going to look so beautiful on my shelves. But yes, I will definitely be continuing with the Atlas Paradox. This is the naked hardcover. Again, super shiny, super gorgeous. And then here are the end pages. Don't know what's going on here. Looks absolutely horrific. All right, y'all, that is it for the reading updates and the nerdy bookish mail that I have. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to have any other updates today. I'm just going to be catching up with things around the house and then it's gym time. Ooh, and Robert has D&D tonight, which means I actually have all night to myself as well. It is glorious. This never ever happens. I never have the house to myself for an extended period of time. So I'm just looking forward to being able to slow down and catch up. If I do have any more reading updates, I will pop on before ending this vlog. But if not, this will definitely be the final clip as this is now a two-week vlog and it's getting pretty long. So I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye now to you just in case and I will see you in the next vlog. Hey y'all, I wanted to pop in and film one last clip because I did just get some fun bookish mail that I wanted to share with you. So if y'all are fans of Colleen Hoover, you know that she just released It Starts With Us, which is the sequel to It Ends With Us. I only just read It Ends With Us a couple of weeks ago and it wasn't my favorite Colleen Hoover, but as always, it was still a very poignant story. The characters were beautiful and flawed. It had complex character dynamics and relationships. It had those harder hitting elements that Colleen Hoover is famous for. And as always, it was stunningly written. So even though it wasn't my favorite, it was still a solid four stars. And I knew that I absolutely wanted to get the sequel. So I went on Book Depository and found this special edition paperback version of It Ends With Us, which hasn't come to me yet. But when I realized that It Starts With Us was coming out soon and that Waterstones was going to have a special edition, I went ahead and ordered that. So this is actually a hardback special edition. I think the cover is the same as the standard release. And I believe the standard release is in paperback. I don't necessarily know if it's widely sold in hardback, but it does have these beautiful sprayed edges. And I don't really think that there's anything much else exclusive about it, but I did love the sprayed edges and I wanted to go ahead and jump on that. And then my bookworm box came in the mail today. And if you don't know, Colleen Hoover has her own bookish subscription box. There are multiple levels to the services that you could get, but for the most part, it features indie romance authors. And it guess what was included? An exclusive cover paperback edition of It Starts With Us because of course Colleen Hoover is going to put her book in her own book box. That just makes sense. And so this is definitely an exclusive cover. I have not seen this cover before so I'm excited to have it even though I don't think the size of it is going to match with any of my other Colleen Hoover books. And then like I said I do have eventually that book depository paperback edition of It Ends With Us coming to me. So I managed to score three special editions of these books. All right y'all that is it for real for this vlog. I have to go get ready for the gym and I have another clip or two that I need to edit for this vlog to get it finalized for Saturday uploads. Anyway y'all that's it for me for real. I'll see you in the next vlog.